right. <laughs> Yay. I'm so happy that everybody is here. <laughs> this is wonderful. How are, are we feeling grounded? Are we feeling grounded? Because the tree oils are really good for feeling grounded. I'm just going to do this. Oh, I have. There we go. That's one of the attributes of the conifer oils is their, their influence on us to feel grounded, to feel in our body, to feel strong. Think of the symbolism of a tree. Think of an amazing Douglas fir or a grand fir or a cedar and think of how strong they are. Their roots go mm. in the ground and their, their trunk comes up, 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 and then all this beautiful foliage. And they're flexible. They go with the flow. They can move with the wind, but maintain their strength and their base. And it's one of the reasons why I absolutely love, 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 love the tree oils. I've had so much fun doing the research for this. I, I'm, I think there's gonna be an article that comes out of all my notes <laughs> for it. And, and really, I wanted it to go as far back as possible. And when I started to think about it, well, it makes perfect sense that we have such a beautiful relationship with the trees because we came down from the trees. At least part of our DNA comes from those beautiful primates who preceded us, who lived up in the trees. And so we brought that that knowing and that trusting of the trees with us. And then as we've evolved, every single aspect of our life is connected to the plants around us. We wouldn't be here without the trees. And I, I, I think about that and I see the connections that are made in different cultures and different places, even in our modern world. And then I also grieve for how disconnected so many people have become from the plants around them in the understanding that if not for these plants, we wouldn't have food, we wouldn't have certain medicines, we wouldn't have shelter, we wouldn't have been able to take to the seas in canoes and in huge ships. So much has depended on wood, even the Bronze Age, the development of iron, all of that came from this incredible resource, these trees. They are, they are so crucial to our existence here on the planet. When I, when I ask this question, I would love to hear, and you can just pop it in the chat and, and we can have a look at it afterwards. When I ask you this, what is your favorite tree? What's the first thing that pops into your mind? What is your favorite tree? For me, it's the Japanese maple. I absolutely love Japanese maples. I love the delicateness of the leaves. I love the colors that they turn. I get covered in goosebumps when I think about them. For me, they're, they're my magic tree. They're my sacred tree. I also absolutely love the eucalyptus trees. And I've got a huge rainbow eucalyptus in my backyard. And right now it's flowering. And it's incredible because there's this beautiful sweet eucalyptus smell. And then there's these, this snow of the little teeny tiny petals coming down and covering everything. It's so magical. And then of course the conifers. I am fortunate enough to have grown up in a foraging family. I've lived in the forest. I, we have a beautiful property on Main Island in the forest. It's something that I've just always been a part of. And, and almost to a degree taken advantage of the fact that, that this is so natural to me. Um, I, was, <laughs> I was doing forest bathing and earthing long before forest bathing and earthing were, were healing techniques, were things that people put into a box. And yet I'm also really thrilled that this is something that people are paying attention to again, you know, once again, that they're remembering the tree that I reminded of how amazing and how beautiful this tree energy is for us. When we think about the history of this, think about tree of life. So every culture around the world has had relationships with trees and, and every culture has had a favorite tree, which is called the tree of life. So in my research, I'm, I'm looking at things like, you know, going as far back in Christian mythology to the Garden of Eden and the tree of knowledge and whatever else you may know or believe about that particular story, the fact that there's a tree there that is associated with knowledge is really relevant. We look at the North mythology, the Celtic mythologies, the tree of life is called, and I'm going to probably not say it correctly, but bear with me. You good darsil. <laughs> and my older daughter would be horrified at how I'm saying that because she can pronounce it beautifully. But this is the tree that Odin hang, hung from. This is the tree that everything comes back to that gives us life. In India, it's the banyan tree, the fig tree, and the neem tree. In the Celtic heritage, it's the oaks and the hawthorns. Japan reveres the Hong Kwai, which is also one of our beautiful young living essential oils. The Egyptians love the sycamores. It, there's so much information out there to create a relationship with trees in your life. And I, and I find it really important to have this information and knowledge when I'm working with the tree medicines, because I want to have that kind of sacred relationship with the trees. 
And it's how I feel about the essential oils, these amazing essential oils that Young Living has. There's 18 conifer oils that they currently have available to members. For me, it's a sacred relationship because of that understanding of where they come from and why they're so important to us. And the, the, the oh, what's the right word? Like just, yeah, the importance in our lives of these amazing trees. And when we look at the trees, we were saying at the very beginning as we were all getting grounded after having some technical difficulties that the trees help us stay grounded. And we look symbolically at the shape of a tree, the, the way that a tree moves, the way that it puts its roots in the ground. Symbols of growth, death and rebirth, the eternal immortality. We think of how old trees can be, 5,000 years old, 8,000 years old. There are some trees on the planet that are that old. It's just incredible. Gary Young, who, as you know, is the, the founder of Young Living Oils, he had a very, very deep relationship with the trees. Coming from a logging family in northern Idaho when he was a child growing up out in the bush, homesteading, uh, he grew up with that knowing of, of how important the trees are. And his dream was to have his own homestead. And to that end, at the tender age of 18, he packed up all of his belongings and he headed up north to northern BC, where some of us are right now, just outside of, I think it was Quesnel, and he had 320 acres. And on that, he started his, his horse business and his logging business. That was his dream. That's what he wanted to do, raise a family out in the bush and be that close to nature. At 22, he had two of the largest logging contracts in BC at the time. I mean, this is a, this is a young man who knew exactly what he was going to be doing. And then there was this horrific accident when he was 24 and it, it just about killed him. All he, all he could move was his left arm. And you can learn more about it. You can read the whole story in this wonderful book here that Mary Young wrote. It's so moving. The first time I read it, I was actually, I was in tears. Look at me, I'm gonna do it again. Um, just such an incredible example of somebody who has faced so much and then has made the decision after knowing that he couldn't live like this, he made the decision to live differently and completely changed his life. It, it wasn't immediate that he went into naturopathic college and into the essential oils and all of that. He, he did go back and he actually managed to work again in the logging industry. And that's a whole amazing story as well. But eventually his, his own healing journey is what brought him to this place. And it's why we're having this conversation today. And I remember when I first read his story thinking, wow, how, how was it that he came out of that experience and still loved the trees? You know, a different person could have blamed the tree and could have decided they didn't like trees anymore because it was the tree that fell on him. But he didn't do that. Instead, he wanted to learn how to use the medicines that are in the trees to help heal his body and then bring that information out to other people, which is exactly what he did. And it's such an incredible story, one that I would highly recommend that you that you read and, and learn about just to really put into context what was important to him and creating all of this that, that he's left us with this legacy. We have two Canadian or we have two farms in North America that are directly owned by Young Living that got, Gary Young started. The first one is, um, hang on, where did I put that? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, the Northern Lights Black Spruce Farm, that's the one that's up, up here in Canada. And then the other one, I just forgot its name. <laughs> I have it in my notes, but anyways, we'll come back to it. Um, so he, he founded these two farms in order to be able to harvest these trees to bring these medicines to us. And in the typical way that he does his or did his work, everything is about sustainability. Everything is about reforestation and regrowth and, and utilizing and harnessing what is available through the land and making sure to keep those resources available to everybody. When I was doing some of my research, it was so interesting to find exactly how much effort and work goes into creating these incredible oils. It takes 12 tons of chipped plant material, of tree material, to bring us six to 12 gallons of the oils, of these conifer oils. That's an enormous amount of work. And yet we, we have access to them and I find that so amazing and so phenomenal. Oh, we've got someone else coming in to join us, excellent. So 2014, the Northern Lights Farm was established on that farm, they grow or they, they harness, they harvest wild leadum, goldenrod, Canadian fleabane, white fir, black spruce, blue spruce, white spruce, lodgepole pine. There's a huge laboratory there. There's constant research into how these oils can help us and what they can do for us. And I just, 
I get really emotional. I'm, I know I'm going off track here from my notes, but when I think about what effort has gone into creating this for us, it just feels to me like such a gift. And then that we get to use these incredible essential oils. As, an, uh, as a holistic and alternative healer, I'm always looking for accessible ways that I can help people heal. And that's what I love about working with the plant medicines, especially the tree medicines. Because for me, with all of my learning and the way I grew up, learning how to forage, learning how to ethically forage, I, I know that I can walk outside my door and I can find something in the plant world that will help me. It might be a cup of peppermint tea from my garden. It could be the pine needle tea. It could be the resins from the, the teas. It could be all manner of things. And the more that I teach myself about how to harness these beautiful plant compounds and use them in my daily health and well-being, the more empowered I feel in my health. And that's why I do the work that I do, because I want to help other people also feel empowered. And it's so simple. I wanna show you something really, really amazing about the pine needles. So right here in this bowl, if you can see it, these are pine needles from, or these are actually fir needles from my fir trees on our property over in Maine Island, on Maine Island. So these are ethically foraged from either deadfall or branches that we've had to, to trim or trees that have had to come down because they weren't healthy any longer. And within each of these needles, there is the essential oils that we are able to extract through steam distillation. And in the branches, especially of the fir, there are little tiny blister packages of the resin. And the resin is where these oils come from. And all one has to do is just poke that little blister and this beautiful, sweet, clear, incredibly healing resin comes out of it. One of the ways that you can do this, you can do this really easily is by making yourself some tea. So this is pine needle tea. There's also star anise in this, um, which is another thing that we're gonna talk just a little bit about. So this bodum has a little, a little container and everything goes into it. You pour boiling water over it. You make sure you put your lid on because you wanna contain all of the volatile oils that are gonna be released through the hot water. You let it sit for 20 minutes, press it down and you're good to go. And you can have this every single day of your life. It's fabulous. Thousands and thousands of years, people have been using this tea as a longevity tea to help their overall health. And then you can either drink it cold or you can drink it warm. It's as simple as that. Mm. And I need some right now. <laughs> but one of the things that's so exciting about pine needle and pine needle tea is some of the components and constituents that are in pine needles that modern medical science and old wisdom is, has bring, brought to the forefront for us. And I wanna share with you a quick story actually. Um, and I'm gonna read you something as I share you this story. So way back in the early 1500s, Jacques Cartier came to North America with a crew of sailors and he sailed down the St. Lawrence River and he arrived at what is now modern day Quebec. And the first, or I guess it was the second winter he was there because this was his second journey. His crew came down with scurvy. Now, scurvy is a vitamin C deficiency uh, disease or condition. It's, it can be absolutely horrific and can actually cause death. Now, often today, it's not something we see very often today. And if there is a small vitamin C deficiency that someone has, they would probably be prescribed ascorbic acid. But in those days, that wasn't the case. What Jacques Cartier noticed was that the indigenous peoples, the Iroquois, who were in the village around the, the European village, although also susceptible to scurvy, weren't getting it to the degree, or if it was showing up, they were getting better very, very quickly. So he wanted to know and understand why this was happening and hopefully be able to offer some solution to his sailors. Well, it turned out that the Iroquois were using what they called the tree of life. And it's still not determined exactly which tree it was, but it is understood that it was one of the conifers that was in the area. It could have been the cedar, it could have been one of the pine trees. They all have very similar constituents. But the end result was this, and I'm gonna read this to you because I just find this so beautifully fascinating. So the captain at once ordered a drink to be prepared for the sick men, but none of them would taste it because they didn't know what it was and they didn't trust it. At length, one or two thought that they would risk a trial. As soon as they had, drink, had drunk it, they felt better, which must clearly be ascribed to miraculous causes. For after drinking it two or three times, they recovered health and strength and were cured of all the diseases they had ever had. So this is coming from Jacques Cartier's journals. This is a direct translation from the French. And some of the sailors who had been suffering for five or six years from the French pox, which is syphilis, were by this medicine cured completely. 
when this became known, there was such a press for the medicine that they almost killed each other to have it first. So that in less than eight days, a whole tree as large and as tall as any I've ever seen was used up and produced such a result that had all the doctors of Louvain and Montpellier been there with all the drugs of Alexandria, they could not have done so much in a year as did this tree in eight days, for it benefited us so much that all who were willing to use it recovered health and strength. That's pretty powerful. That's that's a that's an anecdotal wow, right? And then sadly, even though Jacques Cartier brought the tree back to France and, and it was growing in the French King's garden at the time, very little attention was paid to the results that these sailors had experienced. And so it wasn't until about 100 years ago that, that interest started to, um, to re resurface about pine needles and what pine needles can do and why they're so important and why it's so amazing that we have a pine oil with Young Living. Um, so pine, pine essential, well, pine needles themselves, and I'm sorry, but I see that I've gotten myself out of think here. There are two main components that pine needle has that is of interest right now. And the first one is, is called ceramin, and the second one is called, and I'm going to pronounce it wrong, skim, skimikia, I think is what it is. And these, these two components have similar, they, they operate similarly, similarly in that, here we go. Uh, so sermon, ceramin, and this, this is science-based, this is med medical research. Um, a lot of this you can find on PubMed if you, if you Google this to really get this, the science of the science reports of it. Uh, ceramin prevents viral attachment entry and release from host cells and reduces platelet aggregation in the blood, i.e. prevents blood clots. Sycamin does a similar thing, but it also combines with cell proteins to inhibit energy metabolism and is strongly antiviral. And in fact, skimmicin, no, shimkimic, there we go, shimkimic is the basis for the modern flu medication that is called um, Tamiflu. Okay, so there may be some lines to read between here. <laughs> you can always reach out to me afterwards if you're having a few aha moments with this. Um, so this is one of the reasons why there's been an uh, interest, a surge of interest right now in pine needle tea. Uh, and if you Google it, you'll find there's lots of different places now that are selling pine needles um, or that are offering pine needle tinctures and uh, or pine needle powder in, in caplets for people to, to use right now. But beyond its use now, just know that this has been used for thousands and thousands of years for these very reasons. The indigenous peoples of North America used it for chest complaints and any kinds of chest infections, flus, colds, coughs, that sort of things, and anything virally based as well. Um, so, and again, the, the science is there, you can find the science for it. One of the things that's so interesting to me about all of the conifer oils, and I've, I've researched all the ones that Young Living has extensively, and I've also looked at some of the other trees around the world that are not yet available to members of, of Young Living as oils that we can have. They all seem to help with breathing issues. They have the ability to help with breathing issues. They have the ability to boost the immune system. Vitamin C is one of the things that is in pine needle and fir needle and spruce needle and cedar needles at very high concentrations, higher than oranges. So those spring tips that you see if you're walking through the forest and you see those beautiful chartreuse spring tips, those are edible. Just, well, ask the tree first, but then, you know, if you get a yes, take it off the tree and just put it in your mouth and chew it. It has this beautiful lemony citrusy flavor with a little bit of a turpentine kick at the back. Super good for boosting your immune system, excellent for clean, cleaning out your liver. In fact, this is what they would use these for in the early spring was as a tonic to get the body back up to snuff to get ready for all the work that they were going to have to do throughout the rest of the year. Uh, so also to help heal wounds, prevent scarring, stop excessive blood flow and ward off drugs. I mean, think about these trees and think about what do the trees use resins for. The reason the tree has a resin is as a protective agent. I collect my resin from scars in the tree where the tree has been injured, a branch has fallen off, or it's gotten bumped by a car or something like that, whatever's happened to it. And the tree produces this resin like a Band-Aid. And the resin flows down the tree. And anything that tries to get into it, into that wound, like an a insect or a pathogen or a bacteria or a fungus, gets repelled by the resin. 
that same mechanism happens for us. That's why it has that beautiful health benefit for us because it's doing the same for us as it is doing for the tree, right? That's really powerful. And actually I'm gonna share my screen with you for a moment because I have this, these amazing photos that I wanted to just take a moment before we get, or before I get too far in and forget what I'm talking about <laughs> um, or forget to show them to you. So can you see this one here this, where it says Douglas fir resin? It's not shared? Oh, hang on. Why is it not shared? Oh, I'm sorry. There we go. Now you can see my screen? Okay, thank you. New to all this. Okay, so over here on the right hand side, you see that picture there of the side of the, of the tree? And that's resin coming down from the tree. Look how beautiful and clear that is. And then the picture to the left of it is the jars in which I collected that very resin. And I've brought it home and it's sitting in a double boiler and it's melting into uh, grapeseed oil in order to, so that I can use it so it's not sticky anymore, right? Um, up here on the top left, there's a picture of one of the other jars, my collecting jars. Next to it is a picture from the Northern Lights, Spru uh, the Northern Lights Black Spruce Farm. And that's one of the trucks dumping out all of the chipped material. Winter time is when you collect most of the materials because what happens in the wintertime is that the tree produces what's called an, it's like an antifreeze basically. And it pulls that antifreeze all the way up through all the tree and the bark and the inside of the tree and out to the needles. And that's why it's, that's why it's an evergreen. That antifreeze prevents the needles from freezing. The components and elements that are in that antifreeze are what we want. So that's why these are, this is harvested during the wintertime. The sap you can harvest any time of year, but you will have a more powerful healing resin if you collect it in the winter time. It just means your fingers are going to get really cold, <laughs> as I can attest to. Um, here's another picture on, down here on the right hand side. This is a tree that got hit by a, a truck or a bulldozer in the forest. And you can see all that white. That's all the resin dripping down. If we scroll down again, here's a picture of Gary Young at the Northern Lights Farm. And this is the result of one of their distillation processes. That's probably Northern Lights Black Spruce because that's one of their main ones that's distilled there, but it didn't say in the research what it was exactly. But look at his face, he's so happy for that. I love it. And I got another couple of photographs of him here out on the farm. I love this one in the middle, it's so great. And then he's lecturing over here on the left-hand side. Pine itself and then many of the other oils, the conifer oils have been used in industry for the last 200 years, 150 years at least. Think of pine salt. We all remember pine salt. Back in the day, doctors used to prescribe pine salt baths for people who had skin irritations, eczema, scurvy, oh, not scurvy, that was the other one, um, scabies, anything that was afflicting the external part of the skin, any kind of parasite um, infection. Now, you wouldn't do that today because pine salt is not made with pure pine oil anymore. It's made with a synthetic. Um, but we still have all of these conifer oils in our toothpaste, in our mouthwashes, in our colognes, in our cleaning products, in our, in our creams. They're, they're still used all over the place. Um, here in the middle is a photograph of all of the Young Living conifer oils that I have. These aren't all their tree oils, keep in mind. These are just the conifer oils. Um, the Northern Lights, I can't wait to go see those next March. I wanted to show you this picture here. This is one of the three different kinds of conifers that I work with. The, to the left is shore pine, long, very hard, spiky needles that then coalesce at the top. The second one is a balsam fir. It's flat, the needles go out to the side. It's very soft and you can see the new growth up here. This is the spring harvest. This is what has the really concentrated vitamin C in it. And then the third one is cedar branch. It's quite different. The cedar branch has little tiny needles that lay over each other and is flat. The cedar here on the west coast is considered the tree of life. This tree was used by indigenous peoples. Every single part of the tree was used for clothing, for food, for medicine, for creating utensils for their, their boats, for, for eating. They would eat the roots. They would eat the, the uh, pine nuts. If you've ever had pine nuts, that's where pine nuts come from. Um, they come from pine trees. Uh, they used it for absolutely everything. It was a very, very sacred tree for them. And then there's a couple more photos here. This is the shore pine in its natural environment on Main Island. The one in the middle is one of our fir trees. And then the one on the right, this is one of our forests up behind our cottage where we harvest. This is my bodum at the cottage with the, with the pine needles in it. 
And once the pine needles sink to the bottom, then I push it down and that's when I start to drink it. And the one in the middle, you can see my cottage. <laughs> and then just some pictures in the winter time. Here's another picture of the harvest, the winter harvest at the Northern Lights Farm. So I wanted you to have these images so that you could appreciate the whole process from the process that, that Young Living uses to make their oils and the process that I use to make my healing products, my salves and my balms. And let me just make sure that I've looked at all of them. Ah, well, this last photo, we're gonna talk about that in a minute because these are the oils that we're gonna talk about today. Okay, how's everybody doing? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take a moment and have some more pine tea. I can I'm losing my voice I'm so excited to be sharing all of this with you and there's so much information and as you can tell I just want to try to get as much of it to you as possible hmm. okay I'm going to stop sharing screen there we go okay beautiful and I get to see your beautiful faces again excellent all right so let's dive into some of these beautiful 18 conifer oils that Young Living has and that I work with on a daily basis. In fact, as we were starting the, the show, or the show, I mean, as we were starting the class, Pat said to me, Megan, your skin looks so great. What, what, what are you doing differently? And besides the Zoom filter, I said, um, it's also the oils. It's the conifer oils that I'm working with. I put these oils in my face serums. I put these in my shampoos and conditioners if I'm not using the Young Living ones. I, I have another brand that is a, that has an unscented conditioner and um, shampoo and I put in cedarwood and I put in pine and I put in Northern Lights Black Spruce. And you'll learn all the reasons why in a moment. Um, I use them in my salves. These are the salves that I make. This one is a cedar resin mature. I've noticed something really interesting. The mature trees, so these are the big trees that have been around for a hundred years or so. They have a very different kind of resin than the young sapling trees do. And with my research and the creating of these products over the last year, what I've intuited is that the mature resins are excellent for helping support us and working with long-term chronic conditions. And the younger saplings that have the much clearer, lighter citrusy oils, those are really good for immediate use. And I'll, I'll quickly share two stories with you. I really wanna make sure you get these stories before we go into the oils. So uh, my dear neighbor over on Maine Island, she's an elderly lady, been through some pretty horrific cancer treatments. And one of the side effects of the treatments was that her skin became very, very thin and very easy to bruise. And I'd already been working with her with various plant medicines and, and oils and things to support her as she was going through her treatments. So she was familiar with them. She came running over to me one day and she said, look, I've got this bruise and no kidding, it was this big on her arms, huge purple bruise. She said, I've had it for about 10 days and it's not going away. Is there anything in your magic potion cabinet that you have that, that would help? I said, well, my research is telling me that if we put some fur resin on in a salve, that that could heal the bruising, but I haven't actually tried it yet. So let's try it right? No animal testing here, only people testing. So she put the salve on and went off and did her thing. And I went off and did my thing. And six hours later, six hours later, she comes running over to me and she says, look, look at my arm. And you know how a bruise, I'm getting goosebumps as I say this, you know how a bruise gets kind of that mottly yellowy green color, gets kind of yucky color after about a week or so of having the bruise? That's what her arm looked like in six hours. Now, that's not gonna necessarily be everybody's experience of it, but if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, I would not have believed it. It was incredible. She was sold after that. She's like, just keep me supplied with that with that resin. And then equally, we had, a, we had a friend over and during the night, it was dark, whatever, she tripped over the carpet and fell and sliced her chin open, not to get too gory, but sliced her chin open right down to the bone on a, on a little coffee table, corner of the coffee table. And before the paramedics arrived, I said to her, look, put a little bit of this resin on and then take this with you and let's just see how it works for you. And she was open to trying it. She ended up with eight stitches. That's how bad it was. Uh, but during the week before she went and got her stitches back, she said she would just lift up the bandage and put a little bit of the resin around where the stitches were. When she went in to see the doctor to get those stitches taken out, he could not believe it. He told her he had never seen anything like it. He'd never seen anyone heal so quickly from the kind of injury that she had. He said she should have had bruising like she'd been in a boxing match and that scar should have been really big. 
and it wasn't. She had no bruising. And by the time I saw her two weeks later, I couldn't even see where the scar was. And again, if I hadn't seen it for myself, you know, it's one thing to look at the science. It's one thing to understand the mechanism of delivery. It's one thing to, to think you know what's happening. But when you see something like that, that is to me all the proof in the world that I need of just how beautifully supportive these, these oils and these resins and these, these plants can be, can be for us. Okay, isn't that incredible? Like that just blows my mind when I think about it. So, so yes, so I put them in everything now. <laughs> um, I've noticed that scarring on my face has gone away that I've had since I was a teenager. I've noticed that when I use these oils and resins for bug bites, the itch is gone immediately. In fact, my older daughter is really susceptible to mosquito bites. And recently uh, she had a bunch of mosquito bites and normally they would get really big and red and itchy and she'd have them for about a week and she'd be miserable. I said, here, sweetie, put the spray on, put the forest therapy spray on and let's see how you do. And by the next morning, there was just little blemishes, just little red marks. The swelling was gone, the itching was gone. It was, it was, healed just by using those those oils so incredible okay so <laughs> um i'm just wondering how let me let me ask this question and then maybe a few people can pop it into the chat how much of the science do you want how much of the let's just learn what it's good for do you want like if you want lots if you want the science i'm happy to give the science um I might try to see a yes, the practical stories. Okay, good for, what's it good for? Awesome, all right, because you guys can look up the science yourself. You can go to PubMed, you can read it. I can't pronounce half of the constituents that are in most of these things. Um, I love that the science is there, but I also just love, like I just love the trust that I have in these because I've seen the results of them. Okay, so we've talked about pine, excellent antiseptic, right? That's why it's used in pine salt and other cleaning, in cleaning, um, products. At the, at the spiritual level, at the emotional level, it has demonstrated itself to be excellent at improving mental functioning and stimulating the whole, the whole system, the whole energetic system, as well as the circulatory system. Really great for relieving anxiety. In fact, Susan and I did a whole show of our Essentials Roundtable on the tree oils and looking at trauma and how working with the tree oils the way that it, it, it affects the limbic system, the way that it affects the brain. It, it's just, it's amazing um, what these oils can do to help us come back into our body and have that feeling of groundedness. And then of course the spiritual connection as well. I think of um, when people sage their home, you can do the same thing with these pine oils and, the con and all the different conifer oils. Cedar wood, I, I love cedar wood. I will say it actually at first I didn't love cedar wood because it smelled a little bit like cat urine anyone else had that experience with cedars before <laughs> yeah and and when i was first working with the young living cedar wood i i couldn't get past that and then and then one day i went to my cedar wood and opened it up and smelt it and that that scent was gone right I, has any of you, have you noticed this when you work with the essential oils it's, there might be one you don't really love or gravitate to at first but then as you're working with others something shifts and changes in your body and then suddenly you're there, you've, you've got it, you've created the relationship with it. I love cedar wood for my hair. I use it in my skin creams and I use it in my shampoos. And cedar wood is excellent for helping with scalp health, with hair health, with helping your hair grow. I don't know how many of you remember how short my hair was a year and a half ago, but this is how long it is. It was short, like it was scalp short. <laughs> and, and part of that's because I haven't cut it, but. I believe it's been growing a lot faster because of the cedar wood. The Egyptians used it in their embalming practices and it's been used for thousands of years in places like Tibet for medicine and, and incense. Cedar incense is really popular all around the world. It's great for calming inflammatory responses. And I would, I would say that that's both the emotional inflammation and physical inflammation. Do you know what I mean by emotional inflammation? Has anybody heard that term before? I just made it up. I love it. <laughs> but now it's going to be something we use, right? It's, it's that moment when you find yourself in an emotionally charged situation and it feels like you're, you're teetering, like you're either going to fall into the anger or the fear or the upsetness or whatever it is, the anxiety, or you're going to be able to take a breath and step back 
and respond instead of react. That's when I think of emotional inflammation, that's what I think of. Or you have an incident in your life that maybe happened 10 years ago, but every time you remember it, you feel it in your body and it creates inflammation. And then what we know about physical inflammation is that it does come from stress, right? Stress is the external and then it becomes internalized and our body responds by, by experiencing inflammation. So most of the, I think all of these um, conifer oils are really, really good for, for that sort of thing, inflammation. Um, cedarwood is also really good for oily skin and excellent for things like acne and eczema and scarring from those. So really beautiful for all of those things, calming and purifying properties. There's been a lot of research done on cedarwood and uh, the brain, the limbic regions of the brain, the centers of emotion. So this is another really great one for working with any kind of ADHD, um, it dis difficulty focusing, somebody who's disassociating, somebody who's experiencing trauma or PTSD, working with whatever other medicines and conventional therapies they're working with, and then adding into that the supportiveness of the, of the cedar, of cedar wood. But really the coolest thing for me is about the hair growth. I think that's really awesome for the cedar wood. Um, now, cypress is the next one. And I'll share again my screen so you can, you can see all the bottles and you can write this, these down if you want. Cypress, who, who remembers Lucy Libido? We all love Lucy Libido, right? She loves Cypress. And you know why she loves Cypress? Because it can improve circulation. Where would we put it in the bedroom? I don't know, <laughs> but it works. <laughs> so it's a really beautiful oil to bring into that kind of situation, into your bedroom situation. It's also really beautiful for all the same reasons as the other conifer oils. Um, it helps to speed, speed wound healing scavenges free radicals in the body. This was a really interesting body of information that, and research that I was finding with a lot of these conifer oils is the ability for them to impact at the cellular level and be able to clear the body of free radicals. And that's really important for, for inflammation and just all, all over body health. Um, Cypress is excellent as a liver cleanse. So how would you use that as a liver cleanse? Well, you could use the oil itself and put a few drops in your hand, rub your hands together to activate it, place it over your liver and just hold your liver for a few minutes because we know the body will suck those oils in right away. You could put it in a carrier oil and massage with it. That would be a beautiful way to do just a full all over lymphatic detox with it. Oh, and also this was really cool. And it's not just Cypress, it's, it's any of the other ones that have those that capacity to heal the bruising like the story that I was telling you about, varicose veins. I've heard a number of stories so far from people who have been experiencing varicose veins, especially the really painful kind, have worked with specifically the cypress oils and have noticed a difference. It's really made a difference for them. Now that partly could be the massaging that they're doing, but equally I think it was it has to do with the elements that are in that are in the cypress oils. All right, so Idaho blue spruce and Idaho blue fir. Let me ask you this. What is your favorite conifer oil of Young Living? <laughs> and you can pop it in the chat if you want to. I love Idaho balsam fir. I love how it smells. It smells exactly like when I'm working with the, my, the fir oils on, on my, at my cottage when I'm making the, the balsam fir oils. It's the exact same smell as the resins from those little blister packs that I was talking about. Um, Idaho blue spruce. So a spru spruce and fir are different species. So they do have slightly different constituents, but they're also very similar. They, they overlap. Idaho blue spruce, this is, this fascinates me. And I'm, I'm going to say it in a way that I hope I'm okay to say it in. It, it has been used in psych, psychology research, I guess it would be, or psychiatric research to help with addiction issues. And the reason for this, and I will go a little bit sciencey just because this is so interesting to me. I find this so fascinating. It is an, an NACHR inhibitor. NHCHR is nicotine, nic nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. <laughs> That's a mouthful, right? <laughs> but what it does is it helps to heal the body's addiction to the chemicals that are in nicotine. And in healing that, it helps to, to stop the addiction. So it's Research is happening right now looking at Idaho blue spruce and 
how this can be applied in the real world to people who have severe addictions, not only of nicotine, but also of a lot of different drugs. Equally, it's being studied in the treatment of neurodegenerative and psychiatric disorders, including Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and schizophrenia because of the way in which it impacts on the neural pathways in the brain and can help to initiate healing at that level. I find that absolutely fantastic. I think that's the best thing ever. The other thing is that it hits the gas, it, it's, um, it has a sedative and a calming effect because of the way in which it hits the GABA center of the brain. That's a bit more science, but I just, I'm so excited about that information that I wanted you to have it. Beyond that, pain relief, same as the other ones, insecticidal, same as the other ones, smells amazing. Idaho Blue Spruce, um, where is that one here? Yeah, it just has a, it has more of a turpentine smell to it, I find, than the citrusy, and I absolutely love it. I think it's fabulous. Idaho, or yeah, Idaho Balsam Fur. So this is, this is one we have in Canada as well. I use this one in my Sacred Face Serum. Balsam fir has been used for, for thousands of years. There's actually a recipe that comes out of the Bible for this beautiful face serum that, in, that includes frankincense, balsam fir, and myrrh. And so that's what I use when I, when I make up my, what I call my sacred face serum. And all my families, my family members love it. <laughs> they just think it's the best thing. And it is, it's so wonderful. Really, really beautiful for helping to diminish wrinkles and to nourish, nourish the skin. And also as importantly is the effect that it has for, our, for lungs and chest. So if you find yourself feeling a bit congested or you've got a cold coming on, don't let it get you down. Put a few drops of Idaho balsam fir into a bowl of warm water and put a towel over your face and breathe it in or make a salve out of it and rub it on your chest. You remember Vicks Vapor Rub? Think of Vicks Vapor Rub, only we're using Idaho balsam fir instead which will be so good for you. So, so, so good for you. Okay, and then I wanted to talk about Northern Lights Black Spruce, which as some of us know, has been, it's been determined that it has one of the high, I think it's the highest frequency, unofficially the highest frequency of all the oils in the world, which is phenomenal. Um, also hormone balancing soothing to the skin it's it has cortisone like properties to it so in that when it's when it's used on the surface of the skin for things like rashes it can be really really helpful but i definitely put it into a carrier oil all of these you'd want to use with them with the carrier oil many of these oils that we're talking about and the other ones that we're not going to get to today are in lots and lots of different products and blends and susan i think you had brought a whole bunch of things to pop up and show us some of what is um where these are in the in the young living world would you could you, you, you show you now you yeah please that? then i can have some tea um so there are the singles that she was um, showing and i'm just going to show you these are all of these blends have tree oils in them and um i i just have a few products at home the um christmas spirit hand soap you get a pump with it right it has the blacks or the yeah, black spruce. And the Winter Nights has uh, different the, of the tree oils. The Breathe Again Roll On. Sorry, the Roll On. Um, I make my own spray with tree oils. So I put, uh, this one has frankincense. It's not a conifer, but um, same deal. You could put a couple drops of um, a tree oil in your own little atomizer and fill with water um, I usually use it up so quickly, I don't worry about a preservative or anything. Um, and then, sh sh sh, there you go, you got your own. And then uh, the Ortho Ease has um, tree oils in it. And the V6 massage oil doesn't have tree oils, but you could get that and add your tree oils that you want for massage to that or get um, an unscented organic lotion. Um, the Rollerballs, Valor and Tranquil have tree oils in them. And even some of the face products have tree oils in them. Uh, you can make your own roller balls with, um, this one is Valor. I just put a, a few drops of Valor and add a carrier. Um, and so, you know, I, I'm just going to show you in the books if you, if you're on, if you have purchased a, um, a kit from us, 
you would have been given one of these books because we make them available to all people who are signed up. So I have them. So this is a, an, the essential oils pocket reference. It's a small one and um, everyone should have one because it will tell you everything you need to know in here. But at the back in one of the appendices, appendices uh, they list all the oils, the single or the blends, and then on the side, they'll give you a list of all the products they're found in. So if there's something you want or something you can't use, you can always research it and look it up. And they've also done that in the uh, giant desk. This one's huge and heavy, <laughs> the big one. They do the same thing at the back. Um, and one other thing I just want to show you is another book, if you like research and reading, the vibrational raindrop technique. So you've heard about the raindrop technique in Young Living, and they do use cypress oil in that and a bunch of others. There are 11 oils that they use on your spine and your feet. Um, and there, you can, there are videos, you can learn about that. I'm happy to teach it to you. Um, but this book is very cool because they use the raindrop in combination with vibration, so tuning forks. Um, and they use specific oils to stimulate certain meridians. And I just marked a few just to quickly read to you. Um, balsam fir is, has, has a cooling with an affinity for the lung and kidneys. It tonifies the lung and um, thereby helps the kidneys receive chi. Okay, uh, cedarwood. Uh, affinity for lung and bladder meridians. Lung, lung, you're hearing lung a lot, aren't you? Cypress, uh, an affinity for lung, spleen, and kidney meridians. Idaho blue spruce, lung and kidney meridians. Um, ortho E, same deal. Spruce, uh, lung and kidney meridians. So, and the other oils aren't listing that. Though only the tree oils are doing that. So, and I love that. Yeah. yeah, so if you are into Chinese medicine at all, uh, this is a great book to kind of read through, especially at the beginning where they have all the oils listed and they'll tell you which meridians in your body they'll support. Yeah, and I love that, that, that um, the theme of the lungs, right? Because when we think of what these trees do for us, well, they are the lungs of the planet. They are. They are the lungs of the planet. Now, all plants do that for us, but the trees especially and the conifers, even more so because they remain evergreen. They're able to be the lungs of the of the planet even in the wintertime because they have that beautiful antifreeze that goes up through their whole through their whole system. So these oils that I'm sharing with you today are not all the oils, obviously. There's so many of them, but I chose these ones because these are generally easy to access. They're not very expensive, especially when you've got your Young Living membership. You, of course, you get them at your wholesale pricing and they blend really beautifully together. And also because they're familiar, right? I, I wanted to start this series with some of the trees that we know that we're familiar with in our own environments here in North America to help to create and establish that relationship with the trees that I'm hoping all of you are going to have. If you don't already, I'm gonna share my screen again to go back to this photograph, let me bring it up big for you. Can it come up big? Oh, it's not. Spacebar? Oh, right. <laughs> Thank you. Spacebar. Oh, spacebar. There we go. <laughs> there it is. So in there, you've got the oils that I've spoken about. And what's not in that image that we created is the Idaho balsam fir. But that's also what we talked about today. And then what I did this morning as I was pulling all of my beautiful oils out of my collection was to put together what I'm calling forest therapy, nature essence. And it is four drops of each of these oils and 10 of the pine, So 10 pine and then four drops for the rest of the ones that are listed here. Megan, can you say that again? I'll put it in the chat. Okay, so 10 drops of pine, and this is a 50 ml spray bottle, 10 drops of pine, and then four drops each of the other oils. Each of uh, Northern Lights black spruce. Yeah, cedarwood. Cedarwood. Cypress. Cypress. Idaho blue spruce. 
and Idaho balsam fir. I think they've changed the name of Idaho balsam fir. They I think have. It's now called Grand Fir. It's called Grand Fir, and then I think it says Idaho underneath instead of Canada. It used to say Idaho balsam fir Canada. <laughs> now it says Grand Fir. Did you know that I have to show you a picture of something? Um, oops, in a 50 ml bottle. Um, there is a blend called Evergreen Essence. Mm. You probably can't see me, but. Um, uh, it's got all the all the tree oils in it. It's so beautiful. And the other one that has a lot is the Majestic Canada. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful. And white one. lights as well. That's oh, white lights, yes. Yeah. And there's a soap, white lights. You can winter nights, uh, not winter nights, but there is now. What was it? What white lights? Yeah. White light. White light. Yes. So white light we can get in Canada. Evergreen essence we cannot yet get in Canada and Young Living put out a beautiful collection from the Northern Lights farm last, I think it was around Christmas time, four of their new, well, three of their new oils and Northern Lights black spruce. There's a lodgepole pine, there's white spruce, there's, I should have had them out. I can't remember what the third one. I anyway. have them here, Megan, I can okay. show. Okay, perfect. So even though they're, they're distilled in Canada and produced in Canada, we can't get them yet in Canada. <laughs> So not individually. And we made a video about that. It's in the uh, music, in the therapists and essential oils group. Yes, when we first opened them up. Oh, my gosh, we had so much fun. What did we it, some of them smelled like bacon, others yeah. smelled like wet pavement in the summertime when it rains. <laughs> we had a lot of fun putting it all together. Yeah. <laughs> so there's so many amazing ways that you can work with these oils. And oh, okay, for some reason, I've got this up three times now. You know, and it's all the ways that you can imagine that you already know how to do diffusing them, blending them, roller balls, spray bottles, salves, um, and also working with the teas. But one of the things I really wanted to share with you today is this. This is my latest project, and today I am launching it. This is my new Etsy shop called Megan Edge Botanicals. And many of you have over the last year had the opportunity to try some of the salves and balms and things that I've been making and working with. So you've been part of my research team. Thank you so much. Now we're into production. And so here is my page. Beyond the Garden Gate is the, the sort of subtitle, Teas, Tinctures, Salves and Balms. And I've tucked in my heart's journey because why not? It's all about nature. Um, but so far on the page, you can buy the sticks and twigs tea from me. That's the, the uh, fir and the, I've, I have fir and pine. And then I also have cedar boughs, but I haven't put them on yet. And then the, the resin and yeah, the balsam and the Douglas fir resins, the cedar bow. So I'm also making products from the needles and the boughs themselves. So there's one product that is the resin. And then the other product is the boughs that have been infused in oil so that the, the oils from, the volatile oils from the boughs get infused into the oil and then I use that oil. I also have a comfrey root and lavender salve, lemon balm, dandelion flower, arbutus flower. There's some pretty unique things on here that I, as far as I can tell from my research, it, are not available anywhere else. Vanilla leaf is another one that I've got and wild rose face serum. And this is just gonna continue to grow and grow as, as I get to make more and more things because I absolutely love putting things together and being all being all witchy with it. Oh, what an amazing hour. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? We're, we're at the top of the hour and this was this was going to go for about an hour. I was hoping to leave you 10 or 15 minutes to ask questions. But as you can tell with by my enthusiasm, um, that hasn't happened, but I'm happy to stay for a little bit longer. Well, and uh, they can always come and ask questions of you personally or on your Facebook page or in our groups. We have two many different Facebook groups. Um, yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. If you have any questions about any of the, the tree oils or the herbal oils, those are two of the areas that I'm really focusing on right now. I'm more than happy to, you know, get together in person or have a Zoom call or however you would want to do it. Or if you want to figure help me, you want me to help you figure out which way to bundle your conifer oils together, which ones to start with. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. If you are not yet a member and you are becoming a member just by buying a few bottles, you will be a member. You can get a starter kit, which has um, uh, tree oils in it and blends in it. it, comes with diffuser. And 
just so you know that if you haven't purchased and you do purchase, then you'll be a member of our group of people who are like totally into the science and how to use it to maintain our health and our well-being. Um, so we do give you beautiful things to make using the products easier, like a book so you can read. And um, I usually include things like empty roller balls so you can make your own, empty atomizers so you can make your own, um, those kinds of things the little paraphernalia things that you might not think to buy so we give those to you so that you can get started right away yeah yeah i we want this to be as easy as possible for people oh it's so yeah. much fun right it, yeah, it's totally fun i mean i i love that my house smells like a forest all the time <laughs> at this point <laughs> and and i love i just yeah i love that i love being able to bring it in and then to be able to share with people how easy it is it really i know it can sometimes feel overwhelming but it's really, it's really easy. And we can, we can help make it easier. So if today helped clarify some things for you, helped answer some questions, helped give you some information you didn't know you needed or that you didn't know before or gave you new questions, then I, I'm happy. I've done my job. <laughs> um, yeah, so anyway, any, any questions, if you want to come off mute, you can, you can question or comment before we close out for today. Also, if I could just say, if you are already a member, or even if you're not, if you have friends who weren't here today and you want them to see this, uh, the video will be available, right? Where Will it be in your, yeah, we'll make it available yeah. so that you'll have access to it. Just watch yeah. for that link. Because it's so informative, I think, back to when I knew nothing, I think if I'd seen this, I'd want to be more connected to a community like this, where people really are interested in health, that it's not about, you know, the selling, it's really about you uh, benefiting. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, for me, it's about empowering other people's health choices. And, and then having the products available that you can then use or teach you how to make them yourself. I love teaching other people how to make these things themselves because it is it is straightforward and you can do it and that's even more fun and so empowering. And once you have the tools to do that and you know that you're getting your tools from a really high, high caliber source like Young Living um, or come to me, I'm a high caliber source too. You know that that we're coming from our hearts with all of this and and really it's it's about helping and making life easier for everybody at this point. I don't know if you remember, I, when I was a little girl, which was a pretty long time ago, we used to have these things. They were like little pine trees that they hung, little okay, pine yeah. trees, you hung them in the car. Mm -hmm. and then, ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's what it did to me, pine salt. Ah! And that, that, that will not happen with actual, <clears throat> excuse me, organic, essential oils right they they're not uh, they're not cut with anything they're not infused with anything toxic or synthetic or chemical like uh, not that you're some, it's it's something your body can process your body can process this it can't process a lot of these other things yeah excuse me i'm going to cough now it's like an integrative process when you start working with them and as what i found is that as i started working with them the more i worked with them the easier it was to it become a it became a habit and I remember Susan came over I had all these oils out I was pulling my hair out I said I don't know what to do I'm so overwhelmed she said it's okay put some here put some here put some here so you'll see them and you'll remember to use them and she was right and I and I started to use them and now there isn't a day that goes by that I don't use them and in fact I cart them with me I've got three big boxes of oils at this point and I take them with me from wherever I go they're in the car we're going to the cottage, they're in the car. Going, going for an overnight, they're in the car. Going to the store, they're in your purse. Well, yeah, going to the store right here. <laughs> you go into your bedroom, you go into your living room, you go into your kitchen, yeah. into your bath. Like they're everywhere. Yeah. I know. Yeah, they're everywhere, which is, um, I think it's wonderful and amazing. So, yeah. You could even put drops in your dishwasher. Of, I do. Like mm -hmm. pine. Yeah. Put a drop or two of pine yeah. and it freshens uh whatever you're using in there it's amazing oh yeah yeah there's all kinds of incredibly creative ways to just have these oils 
all around you, in you and out you. We didn't talk about ingesting the pine oils or the conifer oils. I will say that you can, but be just be sensible about it. So what I often will do is I'll have my glass of cold pine tea and I'll put a drop of pine and a drop of orange in it, stir it around, and then put that in my water bottle and drink it throughout the day and it's totally fine. I just don't go overboard with it because these are really powerfully concentrated. Right. Well, and what some people do or what I sometimes recommend is add it to something like a little bit of honey and you can keep that. You can have an infused honey that you scoop from, which mm -hmm. I know you do it at your house with yeah. different plants. Yeah. yeah. So you could Absolutely. get a little jar, get honey that, and put it in a little container, add your drops of essential oil. It will be diffused. And then when you add it to your tea, it's not super concentrated. Exactly. Yeah. That's right. Um, also in your coffee grounds, you can do that. You can, I've put drops on my tea bags and then just let the tea bag sit for a few hours. So all the material inside the tea bag gets infused and then put that in my, and then put the boiling water over it. So there's lots of really yeah, interesting and creative ways that you can be using these oils. on. A, I a use, I use Believe every morning and I, I either do this and wait for a drop to come out or I do this. It's mine's almost empty. I need a new one. <laughs> um, but I take a drop and I actually put it on the crown of my head. I can just feel it uplift me. Mm -hmm. There's just something about it, the, the smell. And then yeah. and I don't do it for my hair. I do it for my uh, chakra system, for my energy system, because it just draws my energy right up. I yeah. find. Well, that reminds me that uh, some of my research has also shown how beneficial chewing on these conifer resins is for your mouth health overall oral health and that was something that the indigenous peoples used to do and the early settlers used to do so one of the things that i've tried i'm going to do it right now just just so you can see my reaction but i have done this in the past take a little bit of pine oil on your hand put it on your finger and rub it on your gums <laughs> so tasty it actually tastes like the pine needles when i chew on the pine needles mm -hmm. so you can make i've seen recipes for mouthwashes and homemade toothpaste using the conifer oils. And again, anything you're going to be ingesting, you want to know where it's coming from. You want it to be absolutely pure, organic, medical grade, therapeutic, like the Young Living oils. You wouldn't just go to the grocery store and pick up a pine oil. Please don't. Please don't do that if you're going to be using them at all. But it's really nice. And you might think that it'd be really sharp, but actually it's very soft. I don't have any residual aftertaste on my mouth right now. And anyone were to come give me a kiss, they'd get a piney kiss from me. <laughs> So one way to pick oils that maybe your system needs that other people's might not is I've done this when I very first I signed when I purchased my kit I purchased from cat and I when I went to get my order I had my cat my my kit in my cart and then I thought oh I wonder what else they have and I went through the website and there were a couple of things that literally were popping off the screen at me like they were vibrating and sparkling that's how it looked to me when I looked at them that's all I could see and one was this oil believe which I have used almost every single day for the last four over four years wow four almost four and a half years the other one was joy which is uh, floral and the other thing was the ortho ease massage oil so I got all those in my first uh, order and not because someone told me, but because I was, they were like talking to me off the screen. So don't feel strange if you go to the website and you're looking and things are talking to you because that might happen. It probably will actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could do a whole other show on, on intuition and the oils, you know, and how to work with the oils intuitively and how to choose the oils intuitively. And I have so many different techniques from, pendulum to using your body to weighing them in your hands that would give you that information if you're not necessarily trusting that first Ooh, I really like that you know or you're looking for clarification around it I think that'd be fun we should do that <laughs> another do another zoom yes do another zoom on the on all the oils but also the tree oils there's so many beautiful oils that we didn't get to to talk about today if you want more information I'm totally happy to have that conversation with you um, the Hong Kwai and the Kino, um, Hong Kwai and Honoiki, beautiful oils. Blue Cypress, 
oh my gosh, the first time I smelt that, I felt like I was in Australia, standing in a grove of them. The color, it's this beautiful light blue color. And I, it just, when I breathed it in, my whole body felt taller, like a tree. It was so incredible. So there's lots and lots to explore here and lots to, lots. So to even the children's line, they have a line of oils that are diluted and made for children. So you can use them directly from the bottle. You don't have to re-dilute. Um, the Genius one has several tree oils in it. Mm -hmm. because, and it's the one you give to kids who have trouble focusing. So like kids with attention issues uh, or adults. Um, so putting it on like a bracelet for them to wear to school, putting in their diffuser, teachers would love that in their classroom. Um, so uh, that's when I was researching for today, I found out this had the most tree oils next to evergreen essence. That's wonderful. I know there's a lot of research being done on um, a number of issues for, for children, specifically targeted to children for, around autism and attention deficit and various other things like that and working with the essential oils mm -hmm. and the amazing results that are coming out of those out of that research. Some of it we can't really go into here, but I'm happy to have a conversation off of off of the platform, and then we can really <laughs> then we can really dive into it. <laughs> and there's lots of material to read. Like there's just a lot out there. So I know that's often what's recommended is for people to get something to read, and then it that's just another way of absorbing the knowledge. So. Yeah. What time it's quarter past yes so i think we are gonna have to wrap it up but thank you everybody for being here and for those of you who are on the live stream i'm hoping that worked out <laughs> um and it was just yeah it was just amazing and wonderful and i'm so excited to have shared this with you and i know that as i was preparing this i was writing up my notes as if i were writing an article so don't be surprised if i share something with you over the next little while that is of this class and from this class um, that is something for you to read that you can digest some more of. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Oh, there's some Thank more you, people. Megan. Thank you. So this, as I said, this was recorded and I will have the, rec the recording up soon for you. I'll and you can you know. download the chat file. If you click file, uh, it should allow you to download it. Yeah, there is an option to do that, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll stay on until everybody's left and then I'll figure that you out. You can turn the recording off though. Okay, bye everybody. <laughs>